Hi there, and welcome to the introduction for what we call our Meditation and Implicit Senses training here in a little organization called Living Resilience. It's an online website and an, also an online community space that offers events and speakers and uh, numerous resources, courses, uh, to all of it to support the Collapse Aware and Cla Collapse Acceptant communities. And, um, well, <laughs> it's, it's unlikely that you've just stumbled onto this particular uh, video and again, this is this video is a, is meant to be an an overview, an introduction to this meditation program that we have had um, for the past three years in other iterations, earlier versions of it in earlier locations. We had an um, online course platform that preceded this, and we're now happy to have everything in one place in our living resilience community space. So let's move into what is this thing called meditation and implicit senses training within living resilience. And, um, you know, one way to kind of set the tone for this and set some groundwork is to read a, a small summary. It's almost a, a po brief poem length. And it's meant to just be a, a, a lyrical summary of what this work is about. So if I may, if what got us into this global predicament is our individual and collective disconnection from the primary sources of meaning and relationship in human life, deeper self, other people, earth, and soul, and if predicaments by definition offer us no solutions, what can I possibly do to find meaning and reclaim relationship in my daily life? I can remember what matters most to me at my core. Engage in practices of reconnection with the web of life. I can expand my capacities to be present in the face of ever-growing stressors and as artfully as I can, be of service to this precious life. So again, that's the more lyrical kind of overview of what we mean to do in this work. There's also a couple of uh, elevator pitches, if you will. The longer one is that we offer transformative support and resources to people bravely facing human-caused collapse of both earth and human systems. That's the longer one. The shorter one is that we are offering profound resources facing troubled times. So that's a bit of the form that we've put together to make it a little bit easier to talk about this extraordinarily difficult topic. I, one, many of us are prone to saying that this is the most difficult conversation in human history. And uh, there are a few things that make our particular offering here, I think, unique. Uh, first, that, it, that it's offered at all, because the vast majority of, of the planet has a very difficult time even um, acknowledging that there might be some truth in this human-caused collapse of Earth and human systems. That's really neither here nor there, but in just a moment, I'm happy to show you um, kind of an easy diagram, a, a diagram with which we can start to make sense of where where do people place themselves on a continuum from this is all a bunch of BS, this isn't really happening, to the people at the far or extreme other end of the conversation in which there are those who uh, are prone to say that we are facing near-term human extinction. So the two ends of that spectrum and uh, what makes our offering unique here in living resilience and particularly 
here in the meditation and implicit senses training is that this really orients us into our experience directly in our body. At every available opportunity, we will custom design the mater materials, the curriculum, to be experienced directly in a person's body. And that includes our relatedness with other people. It includes very much our accessing our own inner wisdom, which uh, we have, uh, we would assert, we have forfeited that center, that connection with our own innate inner wisdom. We've forfeited our connection with other people. We've forfeited our connection with earth. And we would even say that we have forfeited our connection with soul. Many of those topics are, are outside of or beyond what we will be talking about here. This will be an introduction to a number of different kinds of meditation, deliberate practice that each of us can take on to reconnect, to far more easily reconnect with that inner wisdom far more easily find a way to reconnect with other people, with earth herself, and again with soul. So uh, let me just briefly remind y'all of the uh, one of the first pieces that anyone who does our introductory online courses, uh, You'll, you will recognize this almost immediately. There's a, a long time uh, member of the Collapse Aware, Collapse, Collapse Acceptant community named Paul Trafurka. And Paul Trafurka long ago uh, created a kind of a useful little graphic, uh, which he calls the stages or ladder of awareness. And I've uh, adapted that to um, have a, a couple of less steps and uh, still in, it involves virtually every detail that he put into his original write-up of this graphic. And what you're seeing on the screen is a, um, the start is on the left-hand side of the screen where it says business as usual. And you can see by the size of the uh, blue rectangle that that's supposed to represent the scale of the population, the Earth's population, who are uh, going to be engaged at that level. <laughs> His point is the vast majority of people, this is all they've ever known, and this is how they will go to their final day, is being completely and utterly saturated in the business as usual model and with little or no relief with never seeing that there's anything other than that to experience. The next one up that you can see is called, he calls one problem. And notice how it's substantially smaller than the business as usual um, grouping of people, if you will. And <clears throat> that's, uh, it's, I'm probably being over generous. It's probably far smaller than that, but I'm putting these in to show a progressive, progressively more shrunken scale at each step on this ladder. So with the idea of one problem is that a person would encounter one situation in their life. If These days, it's pretty easy to point at. It could be the pandemic. It could be a hurricane wipes out their city. It could be that uh, as uh, happened here in Southern Oregon a couple of years ago, we had a firestorm come through our our uh, vicinity and uh, 10,000 people in two days, 10,000 people were uh, left on the streets. Their homes and businesses having been decimated. That could be called one problem for someone who had no particular awareness of or acknowledgement of the uh, greater predicaments of our world, the collapse, uh, the collapsing nature of the human and earth systems, this one problem would be enough to, uh, as 
as we like to use the example here, uh, often spoken by a boxer here in the USA uh, named Mike Tyson, everybody's got a life plan until you get punched in the face. That's his not very uh, glamorous way of describing when life has its way with us, when it knocks us off center significantly, and we are we struggle to find our way back to a sense of center. And um, so you can imagine in disaster relief uh, efforts in uh, around the world these days, with if it be it fire or floods or hurricanes or typhoons and so on, <clears throat> that one problem is enough to shake them into a certain amount of engagement and a little bit, uh, shake off a little bit of the delusion that there's nothing but the business as usual structures. And there's nothing to see here. There's no questions to be asked. We just keep doing the same thing over and over and over again in this self-terminating model. So in the one problem step, people have had some kind of wake up call that brings their attention to, oh, maybe things aren't as, um, all lined up and perfect as we think they are in the business as usual model. Maybe I need to do something to uh, start to build some practices so that I can be more uh, present if there should ever be something like this again. So at this one problem level, what we would say is that there are skills that and, and ways of bringing relief and um, building back that sense of center uh, that we would call first aid level resilience skills. In fact, for many communities, at least here in the USA, uh, disaster relief teams will come in and offer these first aid level resilience skills uh, in order to uh, help people get their sense of center their sense of connection with each other, their sense of awareness of what's going on, and even just being present in their body, first aid level resilience skills. The next level is called practices for recon reconnection or practices for resilience. And this is a level at which we start to realize there's not only this one thing that got our attention last year and the hurricane and so on, but there are actually many different challenges and, and predicaments out in our world. And uh, it would behoove us to increase our capacity to be present in the face of larger and larger stressors, whatever they may be in our neighborhood. So again, practices for resilience and practices of reconnection, these are practices different than the first aid level resilience skills of the last level. These require more of a sense of groundedness, a little bit of normalcy at home, so that one could spend some time learning some of these very, starting with most basic level skills, and this is where we start to uh, connect with these meditation and implicit, implicit senses training skills. So practices for resilience, practices of reconnection, and meditation as one type of contemplative practice and implicit senses training. We'll get to what that's about in this video and through the series, you'll be getting more and more of a sense of what we're talking about, especially as you go through the progressive lessons of this training. Toward the end of that substantial area, and notice again, there are fewer people here than either of the two previous stages. And so there are very few people who are going to start to really engage sincerely in expanding their capacity to be present and expanding their, their uh, skills at uh, reclaiming and expanding a sense of center, no matter what's coming at them. 
So the, the people who have taken that on for months or even years, they can start to nudge into an extraordinary level. There are already remarkable benefits that uh, we will speak about in the various stages of this training. There are many benefits to be had at the level of practices for resilience and reconnection. But what we've noticed is that as people sincerely engage with these practices over time, over months and years, they start to nudge into some extraordinary levels of, of opening up to larger and larger scale inner resources, resources that have been with, within us the whole time. But without those practices of resilience and reconnection, it is extraordinarily unlikely that people will find it on their own, find these, these large-scale inner resources on their own, given the constant 24-7 distraction and addiction, if you will, uh, of our business-as-usual culture. These practices for resilience and reconnection, these contemplative practices in particular, can help us to desaturate from that business as usual, constant barrage. And what tends to show up there are things that are truly transformative, inner resources that are immense and, again, truly transformative. There's another term that you'll hear us use about this end of the spectrum. We call it the implicit. And again, we'll, we'll give you more uh, reasoning and, and detail about that but uh, important to get a sense of how this meditation and implicit senses training fits into the, uh, for the folks who decide to take this path on, to give it some sincere effort over the coming weeks and months and perhaps years. Uh, it's important to get a sense of how uh, foundational these meditation and implicit senses training sessions are and can be. Putting this particular slide up the, um, to really give us a sense of why, why would we want to do this? And what are some of the dynamics? What are the, some of the pitfalls? What are some of the usual steps that people go through as they take on these practices of resilience and reconnection? And so, Let's just read this together. The first ability that we should cultivate to support climate action is the ability to connect to our own bodies, to others, to nature around us. But what emotions then come can be unpredictable. So the second ability would be to feel them without shutting down or recreating the original distance. This is a little preview of one of the pitfalls that can happen. You gotta remember that no matter how sincerely we want to expand our ability to be present and to be of service to the people we love in, in the coming, you know, whenever uh, hard times may come again, we we all grew up in the, immersed in this business as usual environment and that involves a number of elements that we've been grappling with especially in these past uh well really this the from 20 from the 21st century the first day of the 21st century on uh, yes, there was plenty uh, that was challenging and predicaments were showing themselves before that. But in these past 22 years, um, this has been an extraordinary uh, time of a, really a parade of uh, predicaments and uh, elements of collapse uh, showing up on a, at this point nearly daily basis. So those, those human-caused elements of collapse of both Earth and human systems 
they happened in this business as usual environment, this uh, constant saturation of this shadow driven model of human operating system, if you will. So uh, uh, folks who take this particular path on in, in all sincerity will end up at some point or another addressing their own shadow the kind of hidden elements of ourselves that we don't want to look at how how we have been ourselves complicit or causal at some small level on the individual level that we've also been immersed constantly in the larger scale the global scale conversations and elements some of them conscious some of them unconscious that have driven us right to the to this edge to this predicament laden edge so this particular uh, admonition um, is particularly um, appropriate to mention as just one example of many of um, saturated habits in being that we tend to carry and how if we came together with other people sincere kindred spirits who were themselves also wanting to expand their capacity to be present and to be of service to those they love we could sit in circle and we could assist each other in desaturating we'll get to that this next slide is again telling us a kind of a, an awkward or an uncomfortable truth that um, people we we will bump into this uh, this realization at some point uh, as you if you're just entering this collapse aware conversation this collapse acceptant conversation um, this can be uh, disturbing news for you if you've been around this conversation for some time it's likely this is not uh, unfamiliar we live in a culture that only wants to talk about what's going well anything that's not going well is positioned as a detour from the main road the truth is that pain is not a detour from the main road pain is part of the road we walk as human beings indeed we will find moments perhaps extended moments perhaps chains of extended moments of discomfort and pain along this path and the question then will be what will you be doing to expand your capacity to be present in the face of those discomforts and those pains and what will you be doing to be more and more intentional about your state of being how will you be in your own family in your own neighborhood in your own workplace as these stressors keep building and building how will you comport our how will you comport yourself and how will we comport ourselves together in the face of these ongoing and ever-growing stressors this meditation and imp implicit senses training is a progressive step-by-step -step movement through a number of different very simple meditations they uh, may well be simple but uh, especially if you've had your own meditation practice you've had your own contemplative practice for some period of time in your life you may uh, see some very unusual elements put together uh, something things that are um, not known to go together um, customarily when you're learning meditation in, in any of the major meditation uh, tracks or uh, lineages if you will the primary purpose of this entire program with living resilience is to give ourselves an opportunity both individually and together to 
um, reconnect with deeper self, with each other, with earth, and with soul. It's also to, within that, to reclaim a sense of an embodied felt sense of center. And without that kind of expansion, reclaiming and expansion of that, that felt sense of center in our lives, both individually and with those we love, we will have extraordinarily difficult uh, challenge of trying to be more and more present in the face of larger and larger stressors. In order to start us out at the simplest possible level, we are going to be starting with a, a level called simple stillness. This, as with each of the types of meditation I'm going to briefly describe here, you will find them stacked up like a menu in this meditation and implicit senses training. And we are starting here with simple stillness because we have to start at the at really the ground level, no matter how experienced you might be in your own contemplative practice. So we ask that you um, go ahead and, and um, follow the instructions, that you'll find them quite simple, quite easy to follow. And really, if you decide to download this and any of the um, meditations in this series, you'll soon find that there's a, a bell at the beginning and a bell at the end of either a 15-minute or a 30-minute section of time. You'll also find a, a complete instructions set and some prompts to kind of guide you through some of the context setting and, and through some of your own explorations uh, in this unusual way of learning a meditation practice. So again, simple stillness, that's what we'll be beginning, beginning with. You, know, you will find our suggestions is to do each of these in the progression daily for some period of time. Um, I myself have always um, taken on meditation quite seriously, and this is at least 30 days of daily practice for me. Uh, you will find your own uh, right frequency and, and right intensity with any of the meditations in this series. Remember, as I mentioned, the Paul Trafurka scale is, uh, starts at the first level of engagement is this first day level of resilience skills. And one of the terms that shows up in many different first aid level resilience skills trainings, not just here, but elsewhere, is a word called coherence. Coherence is something that we can experience quite individually within our own selves. And also we can experience that with other people. It also could be called self-regulation and co-regulation like when life knocks you off center to how you bring yourself back to center could be called co excuse me self regulation how you do that with other people your own family members your loved ones your community and so on is co regulation how you all bring yourselves back to center together with coherence and especially within the body and how we'll be uh, assuming that you're pr practicing within this mist training, this meditation and implicit senses training, is that you will be experiencing as simple as it gets. The, this is effortless, is to be able to lay down in a quiet space, possibly limited light. All the instructions will be, be there for you. It'll be clear as a bell. And what we found is that if you're able to listen to this uh, curated music for this particular uh, meditation for 15 minutes or for 30 minutes, you'll see the options of which you can download. And you'll likely, you know, as with the vast majority of people who have done this particular coherence meditation, you will likely feel at the end of this 15 or 30 minute session, a 
a sense of coherence, meaning there's not a ruminating uh, monkey mind going on up in your head, while down below there might be some emotional discord or some upset that's residual from an earlier conversation and so on. What we found is that in a kind of an effortless way, just live, being laying down, relaxing, and listening to this music and allowing it to just bring your system into alignment to calm that monkey mind, to calm and diffuse any emotional residue from earlier moments. That is often called a state of coherence by the time you're done with your session of this coherence meditation. Again, all the there all the instructions you will you will need to set it up, quite simple. They're there. And all the prompts that you might need to be able to do some uh, extra exploration about your own feelings and where where you actually go, if it's different than what we often find, fantastic. The coherence meditation, that's the second one, the second level of this meditation and implicit senses training. The third level is a clearing, deep clearing meditation. And this is the one where we start to be more active. The last two are really, there's nothing to do. You're, you're absolutely just still and noticing and participating and breathing, perhaps. And that's about it. In, in this uh, deep clearing meditation, uh, we, again, give you all the instructions that you need, very similar to the coherence meditation. Ideally, you're laying out, you're in a quiet location. Uh, you're able to listen un, in an undisturbed way to the particular music that we've chosen for this one. And it starts out similar to the coherence meditation. It has a kind of a, I think it's a three-step progression within itself. And you might want to engage with this one longer than the other two. The idea will be that you will start to become aware of, of different ways of perceiving what's going on and what you're aware of in your own system. System meaning that this whole thing that we usually just call a body. And what we're going to start to introduce is that there, there, you could actually say that there are multiple bodies in here. There's the mental body you know, the, the power of our thoughts to disturb us or to align us or to enchant us. It's an incredibly powerful influence on our entire system, the mental body. Of course, there's the physical body. We could have discomfort or we could have a, an itch or a scratch or a, uh, there are any number of ways that our physical body can be conducive or can be rebellious in the contemplative practice we're also going to be suggesting well you know we've we already mentioned also the the emotional or feeling body and that can have its own dynamics how many times have we all tried to get to sleep at night and we've had some sort of emotion that keeps stirring again easy to see how it can influence our system what is probably the biggest uh, step forward that you'll discover for many people is so is the uh, introduction of an energy body. And again, there'll be more instruction there, more details about what this is. Uh, but what we'll find is how that shows up is the with the incredible power of our attention. And we soon can learn how to deploy our attention within and through our system in such a way that it brings us a far deeper, far more profound level of coherence to the point that it can actually, there are um, many, many people who have experienced this type of meditation, and especially at this level, have seen that uh, this deployment of our attention 
through our physical and feeling body and mental body and so on can actually start to bring us a sense of not only coherence but of healing there's an uh, uh, always growing body of work in these past uh, especially 10 years or so where there's been a, a quite a focus on healing trauma that a person may tend to hold in their system trauma from birth childhood recent any number of layers or possible kinds of trauma what we found is that this kind of meditation this kind of deployment conscious deployment of attention can be an extraordinary leverage to diffusing and even healing uh layers of trauma and um discord within our system that's the deep clearing meditation there are a number of other kinds of meditation included after that progressive series that deep clearing is is plenty to be the capstone of the actual practice that we're offering here but we've also included a number of other kinds of meditation from other providers, other content producers, other teachers that we hope you will find equally useful at a later time. Uh, they will range from um, extraordinarily uh, healing and rejuvenating and relaxing contemplative and quieting meditations to more activating meditations things uh, edit meditations that can help us to bring forth and uh, release inner energies that uh, can sometimes be withheld or compressed in our system by just by going out and you know being in the world and having to muscle through day after day of going to work or going to school or uh, difficulties in relationship and so on uh there there are definitely times when what's called for is not so much a settling and calming that's fine when it's what's called for sometimes what's called for is a more activating uh, meditation or practice so we've offered a couple of those there are there's more but you get they're all self-explanatory you'll get there when you get there start with this initial series get um as far as you can up into the level of deep clearing and uh know that you can connect with other people in, in any number of the subgroups here in the living resilience community space because the vast majority of folks will have experienced the dancing at the edge introductory work and then also this meditation and implicit senses training please reach out to connect with other, other people, to compare notes, to support one another in your practices. Welcome to meditation and implicit senses training. Bye. Mm -hmm.